I played a lot of video games in my life. I played a lot of Call of Duty. Like a shit ton of Call of Duty, man. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, when it came out, you already know I had the whole school in a clan. Or I was part of a clan. We called it CLE for Cleveland. Um, and the snow days, you know, you wake up and you're like, fuck yeah. You wake up at like 8 o'clock and you just meet up with your friends online and you play Call of Duty. As I got older, I kind of got away from video games. And then I, I started to... Um, play when I got a PS4 and I got Uncharted 4 just a mind-blowing game and there was this part in Uncharted 4 where you got to understand the entire game you're looking for a pirate treasure and at the very end I don't want to give you a spoiler spoiler alert at the very end you go over this sort of cliff side you have a rope and you're like roping down from it and as you jump over this cliff you turn your head and the music starts to play even before the scenery in front of you you look down about a hundred two hundred feet down there's a massive pirate ship in this cave and it's in this like murky kind of water massive pirate ship and you're just like holy shit it is insane, the scenery, the music is so beautiful. It just gives you these goosebumps throughout your entire body. I can't, I can't, like I'm, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about that scene. It was such a crazy experience. Like you know in other games how it's just like a grind, you're grinding through dungeons, trying to get a level up. Like there's no like really cinematic points. This was an experience, man. Like that left an impression on me that other games will never really even compare to. And so it is these experiences like that are almost like a bodily orgasm. Like, ah, you know, through, that we experience throughout our life and not just the video games, but anything. If that's like intense, beautiful artwork, music, if that's a, a movie in the cinema that just, wow, Fight Club, wow. The Matrix, <sighs> just amazing, amazing, beautiful things that really wake you up. And so I've been thinking on this a lot lately is that I believe that most of us go throughout our day in a sort of semi-conscious state. We're almost asleep. And I think there's truth to this because they did a study that was on rats. And so what they did, and we've talked about this before, is they let the rat... They open up the gate and the rat begins to scurry and he sniffs and he smells cheese and he's in a maze. So he, he works his way throughout the maze and he finds the reward and he gets the cheese and then they do it again. Now, every time that they lift the gate and the rat goes throughout the maze, he gets a little bit quicker. He starts to understand, okay, I've done this before. Now I know where the cheese is. And so in the very beginning, his brain waves were like surging. He smelt the cheese. He's like, oh, holy shit, I gotta get the cheese. And so he goes throughout the maze. But as he begins to learn the routine, his brain waves mm -hmm. die down. He's almost a mummy. He's almost on autopilot. Like he doesn't even have to think about it anymore. Let me, let me check this thing if we're still alive. Yep. So you're on autopilot. You're doing it now out of habit. And so we've always thought, well, you know, habit's a great thing. And habit can be a good thing for certain things. But it's during that habit, even if it's good, that we kind of go brain dead. And I used to think that this was so crucial, and it is. When we are having habits and they're good, we need to make sure not to become brain dead in those good habits. Because then there's no growth. It's like... It's like almost this S curve. So we go like this and then we level out and then that's it. Like S, okay? There's no more like steady incline. Like we're not growing anymore. But as I realize more, I think that maybe the entire day is a sort of nullified, semi-conscious state where we're not really living. We're not having peak optimal experiences. And the way that we have those things is by stretching our minds, 
we know that flow occurs when you stretch your mind to a limit, you give yourself a challenge that you can handle, but it's also difficult. And what about the body? What about the body? Same thing. You give yourself a challenge. Why do you think there's a runner's high? Because they push their bodies to a limit and then they get rewarded. They get filled with these crazy feel good hormones. Do you, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Like when you brush your teeth, you brush your teeth, say about two minutes on average, you're brain dead when you're brushing your teeth. Like you don't got to think about the tooth. You don't got to think about, am I starting on the upper or the bottom? And I brush my tongue last, but like you just do it out of habit. And so there's like that trigger, that initial response, boom, you get the toothbrush ready, you brush your teeth and then you're done. Same with flossing. Like I'm, I'm brain dead when I'm flossing. You don't want to be brain dead throughout the day because that's not living. That is a state that is low. I'm telling you guys that you can experience high levels of consciousness, high vibrations, like high energy. Think about some of your best moments. Maybe you were in little league and you hit a home run, or maybe you engaged in some fantastic conversation. Those are more of the, the times that you want in your life. And those are by doing things that are going to get you there. And so, you know, one, we broke an addiction down. We are bulletproofing our game. And it's like, so what are some things that stretch the mind? Okay. Since we know how to get there, what are some things that wake us up? Running, walking, pushing your body to a limit. Now this is sort of a paradox because you're not going to, eventually you can't run like a hundred miles a day. You're going to get to a point where you're sort of maxed out. There's diminishing returns. Okay. Bones are going to start to, but there is a point that we realize, man, I could probably push myself a little bit harder in the gym. Maybe I could walk those 10,000 steps every day. And by me doing that, it gives more meaning, more energy to my life. But it's hard guys. When you're in a low state of consciousness, when you're on low vibrations, you're not, you don't feel like doing shit. It's hard to do anything. And that's why we turn to the porn and the drugs. That's why we turn to the stuff that's like quick because the hard stuff, you actually got to get, you got to start working your mind again. You got to turn it on. You got to focus. You got to work hard. You got to get it. You got to wake up. So let's just name them out. Like some stuff that you can add to your life. You can sit in the sauna. This is a very, because the heat, the extreme heat breaks up the body, like feeling it's comfortable. It, the sauna is like extreme. Same thing with cold showers. All right. Reading a book. I've always experienced in the past. I felt like after I read about 50 pages, I want to just go to the gym. And the reason being is because like I have so much energy from reading because now my brain is being expanded because I have to conjure up the images from simple black and white little markings on a page that come alive. And now this video is literally playing through my brain. Okay. So that's like, that is way more difficult than just watching something. Okay. Listening to music. When you do these things, um, creating something, I wrote down a bunch of stuff, man. I'm sorry guys, but you become creative. Your brain is stretched. There are so many cool things like, Physical, I think physical is definitely a, a point that can make you feel better and come, but you got to push it. Like if you normally walk a mile every day at the gym, now your body's probably capable of running that mile. So do it. got to do that damn thing. All right. We're ending the video. What I wanted to tell you guys is if you, there's this passage in the Bible and it says, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Part of these experiences, when we expose ourselves to new stimuli and new experiences, we become awake, we become alive. And that is us rejoicing in the day. I will rejoice and be glad in it. When you set that new PR, when you go and, and listen to that beautiful music or see a play that just blows your mind and it, it just gives you new perspective and you have that deep conversation with someone else, that is worship. That is rejoicing in the day that you have been given, not going around in a dead man's state. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.